Hello, welcome back to the online edition of CMIS 468. This is our next to last video lecture. Um, the next one will be, I'll put it out uh, Wednesday, and that'll be how to get a job in telecommunications. Uh, I've gotten feedback from students in the past. It's really the only useful lecture that I do all semester, so you've got that to look forward to. Um, I'll talk about the hat and t-shirt in a second, uh, course evaluations. Uh, are obviously online this semester, so you should have already gotten an email about that, uh, and you'll continue to get emails until you complete it. Um, please uh, provide your open and honest feedback about uh, how this semester has, has gone academically uh, in 468. If you have uh, recommendations for improvement, uh, this is valuable feedback for future generations. Uh, you've done exam three now, uh, so the only thing that's left, now if you're a grad student, you've still got a, a project to turn in, but undergrads, you've got deliverable number five, which is the full Network Pro certification exam, which uh, remember where to find that. It's under the certifications button on your main page before you get into the content. So it's not in that table of contents area. It's on the main page. There's a button at the top, kind of upper right side that says certifications. That's where you can access it. That'll be open through... May 5th uh, by midnight and number six uh, deliverable number six is also due on May 1st so kind of build in some time for yourself to get those both done that's the the PPR the post project review just five points on uh, what you would do differently next time what went well what didn't go so well what you do differently next time it's just a good habit to get into that's why I have everybody do it and once that's done I'll have final grades pushed up on Blackboard by Tuesday, and you'll have 24 hours to, you know, let me know if I made a mathematical error anywhere, and then I'll uh, put them in CougarNet 24 hours later, and then they're they're locked in at that point. Uh, we can talk about exam results today, uh, certification next steps, career next steps, and kind of wrapping up the entire uh, content of 468 real fast. So let's get started. Oh, yeah, with a hat and a t-shirt. So obviously this is my uh, cardinal chapeau that I'm wearing because uh, the concert I saw in 2018 was my first one in Bush Stadium. So to have a, a rock concert in an open air venue I thought would be acoustically pretty sucky. Um, but actually the acoustics are great there. I don't know how they did it, but the, the clarity of the sound was phenomenal considering there were a zillion people there for who was it journey and Def leopard and their opening act cheap trick cheap trick was awesome by the way and uh if you're if you remember cheap trick from the 70s they just came out with a new album last year and it is also killer i recommend that one highly for you but of these two Def leopard absolutely blew the socks off of journey journey was good but uh they didn't seem like their heart was in it, and they were just kind of racing through songs and one after another. There was no interaction with the audience whatsoever. Def Leppard, you could tell, were happy to be playing together, happy to be in St. Louis, happy to have all their fans there, just all kinds of great interaction, and it was a love fest for Def Leppard. So if you get to see Def Leppard, um, all I can say is pour some sugar on me, because it was, it was, that was a rock concert, one, one of my all-time favorites. So... Uh, now I just have to figure out my, what my last concert t-shirt of the semester is going to be for next time, but I'll, I'll figure that one out. Talking about the exam, uh, did great. Um, uh, solid B average, which is kind of my sweet spot. So a mean of 82, median of 84. Median is better than mean because it rules out outliers. Um, the range was huge, but uh, I won't get into specific questions about the exam in this video lecture, but if you've got something specific about a question that I could that confused you or that I could phrase maybe in a better way next go around I would, I would love your feedback please let me know um, you can shoot me an email with regards to that so the exam is out of the way the next step is test out network pro um, most of you have not done network pro yet remember it's going to be all lab sim questions if you uh, if you pass that's 100 points if you don't pass i've got a sliding scale now if you look at the project instructions document which most of you have not uh, it's on blackboard open up the 
uh, project folder, and it's the first document in there, project instructions. Got, that's got the grading information for how I grade your, your result from Network Pro. But if you're not happy with uh, the points or lack thereof that you get on Network Pro, I do give you the option to retake the exam, but you have to purchase a, another exam voucher. This is between you and test out. I've got, I don't have a dog in that fight. You have to figure that one out and you have to allow yourself enough time because if you do need to retake it, don't wait until uh, May 1st to take the exam. Go ahead and take it this week as, as soon as possible. Just to give yourself a little buffer of a couple of days. Um, if you do need to schedule a retake, retake, and I've got all the info you need right there, um, you know, let me know if you need help with it, and I'll try to help you out. But once you're, once you get the code, just let me know. I'll be able to reschedule it very quickly for you on test out, and you can retake it at your convenience. And by your convenience, I mean before May first, because we're wrapping up the semester quickly. But let's be optimistic. Let's say you do pass. You pass and go, you know what? This is pretty cool. I think I'd like to go for a career in networking, telecom telecommunications, maybe system administration, working in a data center somewhere, or a NOC. Um, I would say the next step is to seriously think, think about doing, um, taking the exam for the CompTIA Network Plus certification. So remember, Network Pro prepares you for Network Plus. The difference is Network Pro is Test Out's brand name, which most hiring managers don't recognize, whereas every hiring manager is going to recognize CompTIA's Network Plus. So CompTIA owns Network Plus, Security Plus, A Plus, Cloud Plus, Pen Testing Plus, Linux Plus, all the pluses, right? Uh, if you... Uh, do it later in life as an IT professional. It's uh, 300 and some dollars, uh, uh, and that's just for the exam. That doesn't include uh, the cost of training. Now, the best way to prep for Network Plus is just to take the, net, the free Network Plus practice exam that you've got in test out. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you've got some free uh, Network Plus practice exams that should really help you out. Uh, but don't pay 300 bucks. You want to go to this site, academic.comptiastore.com. Uh, they do have student pricing. Uh, and I just looked it up, 159 bucks. That, that's a walk in the park. You've, if you don't have, I know 150 bucks isn't nothing when you're in college. But ask your parents, ask a, a rich family member to uh, uh, give you a, an early Christmas gift or something because this is... Uh, uh, this will be invaluable when it comes time to looking for a job, because if I've got two candidates um, and they've got about the same level of background, i.e. none, <laughs> and uh, one's uh, Network Plus certified and the other's not, I'm absolutely going to hire the person who's Network Plus certified. And uh, so the first step is to go to academic.comptiastore.com to purchase the exam voucher, and then you go to pearsonview.com to schedule your exam. What's different about Pearson View is typically you would go to a uh, testing center. It's a proctored exam, so you have to show your driver's license, surrender your cell phone and everything. Obviously, right now uh, in the COVID pandemic, uh, they are looking at ways to do uh, virtual proctoring. So I'm not going to do that research for you. You'll have to look that up if it's something you want to uh, pursue. But I think you should be able to take the exam remotely now, which a few months ago was not an option. Do let me know if you are interested in taking the Network Plus exam. If you uh, take it and pass, let me know. If you take it and you don't pass, let me know. Uh, if you feel like 468 did or did not prepare you for Network Plus, I would love that feedback. Um, I haven't run into too many people that have had trouble with the Network Plus exam. Um, so... As a quick little sidebar, just to make sure everybody's aware, CompTIA actually purchased, they acquired AITP last year, Association of IT Professionals. So yes, we still have an active student chapter of AITP. Uh, at some point, it's going to have to be rebranded as far as I know because CompTIA acquired them, and they're rebranding AITP as CompTIA Pro. So instead of being an AITP member, uh, student member, you can be a CompTIA Pro member for 29 bucks a year. I think that's cheap enough for you to consider doing. Uh, also, if you are a, let's see, uh, and you don't even have to pay the 
29 bucks if you have any CompTIA certification, Network Plus, Security Plus, A Plus, anything, then membership is free. Otherwise, it's $49 a year once you're an IT professional. Uh, so take a look at that. And I mentioned training centers. This is the one I like in Granite City, um, but obviously uh, you may be looking at some online options at this point. Uh, but I like the one in Granite City because they, they know us and they t take good care of SIUE students. Now, if you take and pass the Network Plus certification exam, what's next? Um, obviously, in the security class, there's a whole laundry list of security certifications. For telecom, the list is a little more narrow, and it's all, all very uh, vendor-specific. So, for example, if you go to work for a company that has all Cisco gear, obviously a Cisco cert is going to be advantageous versus somebody that has all Juniper gear or WatchGuard gear, uh, which is one of the many reasons why I don't think you should pay for any certs above and beyond Network Plus. Pay for that yourself. If you need a Cisco certification, get the company to uh, uh, pay for that training and pay for the uh, certification for you. Uh, so uh, uh, CCENT, uh, Cisco Certified Network Associate, Cisco Certified Network Professional. Um, look at Cisco's site to, this, I mean, to make yourself marketable, a Cisco certification, is not, you're not going to go wrong with that. Uh, I don't think you did the ISA cert in 470 this year just because of COVID. Uh, you do have the option to download, uh, to purchase for cheap, uh, more test out modules before you graduate using the student discount. So if you wanted to uh, pay for uh, an access code for routing and switching pro in test out, that kind of prepares you for Cisco's routing and switching uh, content. Uh, and remember that the test out modules are good for 18 months after you, once you activate them. And you don't have to activate it as soon as you buy it. So you could buy some of these right before you graduate and then just hang on to them to use later on. Linux Pro, I would strongly recommend for uh, people that want a career in telecom. No, knowing the ins and outs of Linux is key. I've tried to reinforce that throughout the semester, that understanding the command line, understanding how to... Uh, configure network gear. It's all based on Linux. Uh, Server Pro is Testout's version of uh, one of the entry-level Microsoft certifications. No matter what, you can put studying for Network Plus certification on your resume right now, even even if you're not planning on sitting for Network Plus. I would still, hiring managers of, and HR people have told me, put this on your resume, because if they have an automated system that's looking for that keyword, you definitely want the system to pull your, your resume. So you've got to have Network Plus on your, your resume somewhere. Now, I am working with Cisco actively, to, uh, and I've signed up SIUE to be part of the Cisco Academy, which means we'll be able to offer more and more certification opportunities to students. We don't have that today for you. Sorry, but I just started this a couple of weeks ago. But I did notice on their website they've got some free stuff out there. Because of COVID, they're trying to loosen up and make uh, their training available for free to, to more people. So if you're at all interested in telecom, take a look at what's available free right now. This is kind of for a limited time for the next couple of months, I would, I would guess. Other good sources of information that I'd recommend if you want to uh, start getting more and more uh, develop your skill set in telecom, Twit TV is a good way to keep up with technology. Uh, and then the magazine Network World is a, a good trade rag to keep up with. There's a in-print edition, an online edition. And it's kind of broken out by topic areas, Wi-Fi, 4G, routing and switching, data centers, uh, various uh, software-defined networking, various topics for you to uh, learn more about. Uh, TechRepublic.com is another good one. And, of course, there are a variety of podcasts. Uh, but Twit TV is probably the, the, one, the biggest one I'd recommend. We're going to talk more about resumes in the last session together, but if I can just give you a sneak preview, there are certain skills. I've tried to make 468 as real world as possible and give you uh, definite, specific technical skills to put on your, your resume, which means if you give me your resume to critique, and I will do this for the rest of your life, you're not done with me, I'll be a resource for you as, uh, for as long as one of us is alive. And uh, I'll be happy to look at your resume. But if you don't put, if you tell me you're looking for a sysadmin job and you don't put some of these on your resume, I'm going to be butthurt 
that you just didn't think enough of me to include stuff from this class. So uh, you definitely have some specific things to, to put on there. You may not want to put all of these on your resume, but pick and choose some of the, some of the biggies. And I did have a student ask me uh, last year, this is such a helpful list. Do you have such a list for your other classes? Well, yes, I do. Um, not, not to make you feel la lazy or anything, but you can, if you've taken any of these other classes, I would grab some of these to sprinkle throughout your, your resume, uh, because typically students know a lot more than they think, and they fail to put enough technical skills. They also fail to put business skills. More on that next time. But they fail to put enough technical skills on their, their resume. You've learned an awful lot, w way more than you think you know. Uh, and if that list isn't good enough for you, just cruise through test out. I mean, the entire damn table of contents, right? E everything in there. Uh, if you did it at lab sim, that's a specific still skill that you have in your toolkit now. So again, don't stick them all in there, but if you need ideas, just go through the test out table of contents. I think it's a good idea uh, at the end of any major endeavor to kind of look back and, and see how successful you, you were. Uh, part of that in teaching is to go back and make sure that we covered all of our objectives, all of our learning objectives that were in the syllabus back at the beginning of the semester. So if you'll recall, I just pasted them in from the, the syllabus. This is what you were supposed to learn in this class. Um, the importance of telecom in all business processes. Uh, we did a lot of terminology and vocabulary. Uh, major protocols, uh, changes in networking technology and future directions, uh, a good bit about network security, network design, a lot on network management. Uh, we didn't use Microsoft Visio because I had to change homework assignment number seven for you this, this go around. Um, but uh, you may have gotten some experience with Microsoft Visio at some other point. By the way, before you graduate if you want to download all the Microsoft software you can for free before you graduate that'd be a good idea uh, through what used to be known as Microsoft Imagine and now is called something else um, Azure something um, the five layer model it don't just because it's at the bottom here doesn't mean it's not the most important thing uh, to get out of this class Ethernet switching uh, different types of networking media uh, Twisted pair, fiber optic cabling, uh, wireless design issues, TCP IP addressing, routing, uh, packet capture you've done. Definitely put that on your resume. Oh, my God. Um, different network topologies and designs. Uh, DNS and DHCP, for sure, put that on your resume. And then uh, everything that we covered in the last Chapter 10 on cloud computing and uh, WAN design. That's a lot. I know you're not going to feel like an expert in all these areas, but that should give you a feel for the kinds of things that you could tell a hiring manager that you learned in this class. Uh, but overall, I think there, there are two big things, two big ideas I think 10 years from now should stick with you. Uh, one is that it's all about the layers. Um, everybody's going to ask you that in an interview. You know, what's it, what's it layer one? What's it layer two? Uh, and then the, the other one that I've tried to share is telecommunications is not about speed. It's not about speed. It's not about bandwidth. It's about distance and overcoming distance. We have plenty of speed. It's overcoming the challenges and limitations of distance. That's the, the problem. And if you still don't believe me, let me know. We can, we can, we can talk about this more. I kind of want to wrap up now with uh, another sneak preview of what we're going to talk about in our last session together which is uh, getting a job in telecom. And I found this, this great uh, interview video that talks to some uh, couple of guys that work in networking now that are looking back on kind of their careers. And sometimes I think students like to hear from people that are closer to their age. I mean, because I can preach to you all day long about what life at work is like, but sometimes somebody a little uh, more your age might be a little more easy to believe. I don't know, but uh, I like the stories that these guys have to share. So let's watch this video together, and I'll turn the mic around and aim it at my speaker. Okay. Hey guys, today we have two network engineers, Amar and Mike. How's it going? Can you guys introduce like how you guys became network engineers and what do you guys do? Yeah, I uh, I used to work at Geek Squad back in the day uh, while I was going to school for computer science at St. Louis University. Met a few contacts there, Mike, who's a current co-worker, and our old IT director used to work there as well. Um, 
So through that, really built up social relationships, and when they were looking for people to hire, they brought me on. Started working there, and we looked to hire someone else. I actually brought Mike on as well at that point, and just really been learning as much as I can about the industry and trying to come up as fast as we can. Uh, it was about two years ago, so made quite a bit of progress since then and enjoying it. Um, I studied at Southern Illinois University of Edwardsville. Um, I studied computer management and information systems while working at eSquad at the time. Um, also met our current ITA director there. After that, Amar hired me on over there. And it's been about a year and a half, and I guess that's so here I am. All right, so uh, can you guys briefly go over like what you guys do as network engineers and what kind of service do you guys provide to companies? Because I don't think a lot of people know. Yeah, so basically our company is really mostly dealing as a consulting firm as well as the main networking company for our parent company, which is EPS, Electric Power Systems. Uh, we'll deal with everything from building out networks, deploying servers, upgrading current networks, security compliance. It's a lot of varied work. Uh, it's not really just IP schemes and routers, things like that, that most people risk it, expect. Um, so it, it allows you to build up a lot of experience in the industry, really. Can you guys go over your cards? So was it which, each of you guys, which was your first card? And uh, I guess we'll start with Omar. Omar. First what? First, your first card. Oh, my first card. I, uh, my first card was a Nissan Versa. Uh, no, a car, a card. Oh, oh card. card oh, yeah. wait. Oh, oh. Yeah. I can be in car. That's the accent. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so one of the big things that people don't get in IT is the social nature of IT. Um, and basically what I think is really happens is there's a lot of youth out there that gets interested in computer programming, networking, things like that. And the typical stereotypical view people have is usually a geek that's either shut in and not very social. And a lot of people actually have that expectation. They expect to be kind of left alone and work in their own area. And, not have to worry about dealing with customers too much. Uh, that's actually very different once you start working in the industry. Uh, a lot of times you're going to be dealing with business owners, clients. You're going to be having to build up project plans, work as a team. It is very, very social and it's very crucial to have those skills to succeed because you can have a ton of knowledge, but if you have bad social skills, clients are not going to want to do any projects that you pitch. You're not going to come off well to them, and it's just going to go downhill from there. So it's a very important aspect of the job to learn. All right, uh, Mike, what's your first card of reality versus expectations for a network engineer? Mine? Um, job duties. The, I guess like, whenever I went into this, like, the job duties that I expected to do um, really weren't what I'm doing now. So I expected to pretty much do, I guess, more like networking, more servers, more routing. Uh, I do a bunch of different things. I'm, I'm partly like an account manager, so I deal with a lot of the accounts that, that our parent company holds. Also do a lot of inventory management, um, deal about, a lot with like managing cell phones, laptops, things like that. So my, my job is very varied, as well as doing like networking, routing, um, and things of that nature, building up that service. What do you mean by managing like cell phones, like for your clients or for your own company? For the parent company. So they, they have roughly about 500 uh, different employees around the country. Mm -hmm. So as far as like just making sure their, their cell phones work, if I'm just managing it, if they're, if they're having issues with it, swapping them out, switching out phone numbers, uh, SIM cards, my five, things like that. So to to be clear, you guys provide kind of like like internet service slash any kind of like computer needs, uh, any kind of regular company would need. So like 24 hour fitness needed like a database for their membership slash internet slash it's any kind of database you guys handle that like that's that's your client. Yeah, yeah, we do that. We do it's again it's very varied with what you do. You you can deal with a ton of different situations there. What's a what's like a more basic uh, like client that if you could explain to like a high school student, how would you best explain it if you had to explain like what you do what you do as a service to a, to a high school student? Well, <laughs> that's hard to explain to depending on the high school student, I guess. Um, Basically, the easiest way to say is we provide networking solutions for clients, uh, for their businesses, getting a more stable network, more stable data sources, building out their servers. So we really manage everything the company accesses from their computers. We try to make it as simple as possible and as reliable as possible. Uh, what do you mean, I, I know, like a typical high school student, he might not know what network means, what server means, and what Exodus yeah. means. Basically, uh, we control how any client gets out to the internet. Basically, we handle all the back end so the client doesn't have to worry about as far as how their computer is 
being secured and how it's actually getting out to their network and the rest of the world. Okay, so Omar, what's your next card? Uh, next card, the varying workload that you get. Um, okay. So you expected a varying workload or you I, did not expect a varying I workload? I expected a varying workload in different senses. Um, so, you know, I mean, if you're going especially for networking, if you're doing Cisco, things like that, you're expecting mostly to deal with IP schemes, routers, uh, as far as mostly network management. I deal a lot more with servers and everything else than I thought I would. And I like that. I actually like the amount of work that you get and you get to learn a lot of different things. Um, a lot of times people get shoehorned into just one specific thing at large companies and that's all they end up knowing. So if you get shoehorned into just knowing exchange, it makes it very hard for you to kind of sell yourself anywhere else for anything besides exchange if that's all you know. Um, so I do actually like as a network engineer, I deal with everything from medical software to server management, deployment, networking. It's, it's a lot of varying work that you get there. Uh, what do you mean by medical software? That doesn't seem related to you. Well, yeah. So as a network engineer, of course, if, if you're setting up servers for a lot of different companies, they have different needs. So say if you're working with a medical company, they have to have a local server that's hosting their medical records, that's hosting the software they access, uh, and any other website remote management that they might have on there. So you really have to learn that you can't leave a client hanging, even though your job duty might be to deal with the networks and the servers. You also end up learning how to deal a lot with the software they manage because you have to be able to support that. It's not always easiest to get hold of the manufacturer to support something for a client. And if it's an emergency, you have to be able to help them out then. So you really end up learning that software yourself. So this is a question for both of you guys. Uh, relative to like other fields like accounting, engineering, or like medical, or any kind of like professional fields, would you say like your profession has a lot of varying tasks in comparison to other jobs? Definitely. Um, like the parent company that I mainly deal with, they 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 do a lot of electrical testing. So same with that, that medical program that he was talking about. I could deal with a lot of like electrical testing software. I had to learn how to use it as as well as to support them with it because I rarely am able to contact the manufacturer on that software. I usually have to figure it out. And, we just kind of wing it from there. So would you say like there's constant learning at your job, even now, after you've been there for extra some time? Oh yeah, there's, you're always learning something new, especially when you're taking on a ton of different projects. So as you go, I start out as help desk, so mostly over the phone work, support, remote support like that. Um, and then as I became a network engineer and started working on my own projects, building out project plans for my clients, uh, you learn a lot of different stuff, and there's still a lot more to learn. It's impossible for one person anywhere in IT to know everything. It's a very team-based environment. You're not as good as I may be with networking, servers, software, things like that. I might not know how to do web hosting, things like that. So we have an engineer that strictly focuses on that, and you always have to make sure you work with your other engineers to get your clients settled. Uh, so it's never really a one-man job. Uh, it's, it's definitely a lot of teamwork. And then, so like every time you get a new client, it's like uh, there's a lot to learn about the specific there issue. Is. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of basic similarities as far as, you know, you know how you want to set up a network, you know how you want to set up a server. But again, as we're dealing with different software, different requirements that companies might have, you're going to have to learn different methods that will work for those clients. So you might have one client that just uses local software, a local database they need to access. You might have a different one that just wants, you know, people from all over the country to be able to remote into the same server or that server to copy to others across the country so they can all see the same stuff they're working on. So it is really a constant learning procedure. I mean, it's, we're constantly getting certified for new things and just learning new methods of doing stuff with clients. All right. So uh, I think Mike was next, right? Yeah, I guess so. Um, as far as that goes, well, so my next one is knowledge. So, I guess it, it definitely goes on what we just talked about, the knowledge of it all. Uh, I, you, you really do, you really can't expect one person to know everything. Like that's kind of what a lot of our clients expect. They expect if you're, if you're the primary engineer, you're, you're supposed to know everything. You should know everything about our network. You should know how to fix most things. Uh, but it is a lot of teamwork. We do have to work with a lot of different engineers in the office. So there might be another one that knows a lot more about exchange than I do. And I'm running to an exchange issue. I'll work with that certain individual. Same web hosting. I know nothing about web hosting, so I rely on the engineer to work on that. What helps keep 
like organization and, and knowledge? Like, how do you guys not have a hole somewhere? <laughs> Uh, that's not, nothing's perfect. You know, there's nothing you can't ever say you can't don't have any holes. But I mean, you do try to get as many varied employees, of course, different skill sets, and you do try to get as many people. If there is a hole somewhere, we'll usually say, hey, who's willing to learn this and be our go-to guy for this stuff. Um, so one thing our company also does is we actually do phone systems as well. So we do VoIP systems, you know, and. We've had people that you know just volunteer. Hey, you know, I'll be the guy to learn this, get certified for this. And that way, we have a dedicated phone support guy. Um, and same with anything else. Again, it's as far as deployment services, things like that. As far as imaging computers, people have to get certified in that. I'm actually certified in that. Um, as Mike technically is, he knows it all. Uh, but yeah, that's it's really you fill up the holes with whoever has the knowledge, whoever has the time to learn it. And you otherwise, if you don't have that, you hire somebody in who does know it. Alright, so, oh my, what's your next card? Last card, last card, right? My last one, and I think this is actually a big one for me. I School versus work. Okay. Uh, and you're a computer science major. Yes. Okay. And huge mm -hmm. differences, you notice, between school and work, as far as in the IT field as well. Uh, school, you'll always have, basically, in most classes from my experience, uh, the perfect environment, usually. You'll learn the basics of, say, networking in Cisco, how to program, how to set it up, how to make complicated systems. But that's all starting from scratch. You're starting from a network that really you know everything about. It's very rare you're ever gonna get that in the real world. Unless you're working on a new project, you know, setting up a new building for somebody or just a whole new network for a company, you're usually gonna come into quite messed up networks. You might come into a great network, but if they're bringing you in, you're usually coming into a really messed up network. Uh, so it's a lot of, you have to figure out what did this person do? What can I change that's not going to break all of this? Um, I've had people where it's just wires all over the place, policies all over the place, things you don't know what's happening. And it's a very careful line you're walking because it's basically, hey, what can I do to improve them without taking them down for a very long time? Um, and that's a huge difference, I think, from school. And even in programming, things like that, you'll usually start with, you know, hey, you're building your own code or you're just making your own program for something. I know a lot of people that do that and it's usually never the case. Again, you're usually dealing with somebody else's stuff with a lot of people have minimal notes as you come to find out in the industry. Um, and so you really end up having to learn everything yourself and figure out what's the best way you can tackle it to get it to where you want it to be. So, yeah, I think... School's great for learning the basic concepts, but I've learned more in the last two years at this job than I think I ever had in school or anywhere else. All right, so Mike, what's your last one? Mine is security. Um, as, he, as he's talking about, we, we run into a lot of different things, a lot of different issues with a lot of companies' security. So we'll, we'll take over a certain company, we'll, we'll take a look at their network, and we'll see how everything was set up by the previous person. We get a little scared, because we're, we're just not sure how they were functioning correctly and how they haven't gotten you know hacked before because um, there's a bunch of holes we we lost a bunch of holes in like different like securities <laughs> different companies yeah there's a lot of compliance issues you come across that and that's usually what companies will come in for especially like medical companies they have, all have to be HIPAA compliant so you know data of course has to be very secure um, and you'll find that a lot of them need a ton of work to get up there it's not I guess from an outside perspective, back before I even got into the industry, it's more of a you think, oh, everybody's pretty secure, you know, I imagine my data's secure. And once you're in it, you kind of realize everybody else just doesn't know nearly as much as you think they do about it. Um, and it's kind of scary, and, but then you kind of realize why well, a lot of companies get hacked and a lot of things get stolen. Um, but yeah, it's, you work towards making it better. That's our goal. We're the guys that come in and fix everything. Um, and that's always the hope that you are going to be the one that this client's like, hey, you fixed everything, you did great, you know, we're on board, we're going to stick with you guys. But yeah, it's just a big surprise once you actually first get into it. If this video was helpful to you guys in learning more about network engineering, thumbs up if you guys haven't already. Okay. Well, I, I hope that was interesting for you. I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, it was a guy from, and I was going to use this video anyway, and then I realized that they're local. Uh, the, one guy from SLU and one guy from SIUE CMIS program. So uh, Michael Tran, uh, I think, graduated right as uh, right before I uh, started working here in 2012. But um, 
Yeah, I especially like the the comments on the differences between school and work. And a lot of students have trouble making that adjustment from a uh, school world to the real world. And where there, there are no syllabi, uh, you don't have deadlines given to you uh, three months in advance uh, that never change. In fact, it's just the opposite. Uh, your due dates are going to change from week to week as business conditions change. Uh, so there's there's some getting used to there. What doesn't change is the need to keep on learning and keep on improving. And that's what life is all about as far as I'm concerned. So what do I want for you guys? I want you to go out and get a great job once you uh, get out of SIUE. And to uh, for that purpose, the last session is going to be all about uh, do's and don'ts for your resume, your interview, uh, negotiating salary, if you've never done that before. And a lot of things, I'm going to contradict a lot of things that the Career Development Center tell you to do, and I'm going to tell you differently, just based on my experience, and I'll explain why that is. So just one more session to do together, and then that's it. So let's finish strong and get everything done, and let me know how I can help. See ya.